You're not stopping me. Now I'm mad. Eat this, pal. Coming through. Woo! How's that? Great, right? Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mengs, and today I'm at the top of my game. It's time to spotlight everyone's favorite pair of pink pigtails, the bubbly and energic young mage, May. Coming through! May is a 17-year-old girl from the island of Novis. She grew up at Nomis Monastery alongside Celica, Bowie, and Jenny. Sadly, we do not know much about May's origins, or how she came to the monastery, as none of her base or support conversations touch upon it. We only know that she lived there from a young age, and that she became best friends with Celica quite early on. She and Bowie would often go on small trips away from the island via boat, but Celica was never allowed to join them due to having to stay hidden, and May was never informed about her best friend's heritage during their time at the monastery. When Celica left the monastery in order to go to the Temple of Mila, May joined her to protect her with her magic. In Gaiden, May is depicted as a young, small frame girl with pink eyes, wearing pink pigtails alongside a pink dress covered by a small red cloak, as well as pink flats. Unlike a lot of characters in Echoes, however, May has actually stayed very true to her original Gaiden design, maintaining her pink color scheme, her trademark pigtails, as well as a pretty similar attire overall. Come Echoes, she now wears a red breastplate for protection. She has swapped out her flats for a pair of white boots and shows off considerably more of her legs. May is considered to be extremely attractive by most people, though there have been some frequent speculation among the community that her breastplate may be a bit of a scam, akin to that of Cordelia from Awakening, and that she may not be as busty as she appears to be. If this isn't the case, however, May is indeed sporting a pretty impressive physique for her small frame. I guess you could say, she's at the top of her game. <laughs> May is an extroverted, outgoing, bubbly young girl with a happy-go-lucky mentality. She always oozes confidence and takes pride in being useful and helpful to others. She serves as one of Celica's closest friends and advisors on her journey, often backing her up and providing moral support, and occasionally also talking to her about girl-related stuff, such as boys and emotions. May's energic nature clashes a bit with Bowie's stoic, grounded personality, and as a result, the two of them often get into arguments and fights, which are probably sparked by their obvious feelings for each other. While May loves to talk, she gets flustered easily when caught off guard, or when speaking about her own love life or feelings, preferring to talk about other people rather than herself. May does not particularly enjoy violence, and she displays some qualms about fighting real people, expressing that it's weird for her to be sapping real folks, though she displays absolutely no fear of fighting terrors, in steep contrast to Bowie, who has no issues fighting real humans, but absolutely dreads facing the living dead. She will go to any length to back up her friends, though, and displays a lot of courage and loyalty, even in the face of grave danger. May is very eager to get off the island and explore the world, and expresses great joy over the journey Celica is undertaking, almost feeling bad over how much she enjoys it, though she later admits that she wishes to return to the peaceful life of the island of Novis and settle down. May shares her English voice actress, Jeremy Lee, with Sheeta, Gwendolyn, and Celica in Fire Emblem Heroes. May is the pickiest eater out of the entire cast of Echoes, only tied with Atlas. May is a feminine name and a variant of May, which derives from Maya, the name of the Roman goddess of spring growth. May is one of the few characters whose Gaiden artwork is extremely similar to her Echoes artwork. Even her pose with one of her hands up in the air is almost identical. In Gaiden, May is one of the starting mages in Celica's party alongside Bowie. While Bowie focuses on being tanky, May is a complete opposite and a glass cannon, with a base magic of 9 as well as a growth of 40%, among the highest in the game, but she's also sporting a poor base defense of 2, barely more than Jenny. You might initially be worried about her base skill of 1, but remember that skill only affects the critical hit rate of spells in Gaiden, so it won't really affect her performance much at all. While May sports a decent starting speed of 7, her speed growth is pitifully low at 10%, and it will hardly go anywhere on its own, save by stat-boosting shrines and promotional gains. As a result, May will often hit hard, but she will seldom double unless she goes up against really slow enemies like zombies. Luckily, you can boost her speed up by 3 points using the fountain in the monastery. 
If you plan on using Mei a lot, this is absolutely recommended, as Thunder, one of her signature spells, has a weight of 5, effectively bringing her attack speed down to 3. However, Bowie also calls a lot of dips on the speed increase, and even Jenny could benefit from a few points herself, as being able to double with Nosferatu will make it much easier for you to train her. This is a pretty important decision for you to make, so think a lot about it beforehand. Starting out with Thunder will make Mei initially a lot more useful than Bowie and Celica. It allows her to snipe targets off from tree range, which gives her a lot more reach on the battlefield. Though you will find that it will miss a lot, due to Gaiden running True Hitch, meaning that 70% hit is actually 70% hits, not 82% like in some of the later games. And since skill does not boost hit rates of spells, Thunder's accuracy will never improve. At level 9, Mei will pick up Aura, and this can straight up allow her to one-shot certain enemies due to its insane 13 might, though beware of its 6 hit point cost, as Mei will be left extremely vulnerable after using it. Mei benefits greatly from any magical ring that passively heals her, as it allows her to fight without constantly needing Jenny or Celica to patch her up in between turns. While it may be tempting to give her a leather shield to patch up her low durability, it won't really affect her all that much. Mei's best defense lies in killing whatever poses a threat to her, not tanking hits. If anything, Bowie with his naturally high defense and hit points can benefit a lot more from holding the shield. Once Mei promotes, she'll become a priestess like Celica, allowing her to fight with swords as well as heal. This is quite helpful, but it will most likely not happen for a very long time due to Gaiden's painfully low XP gains, even when playing on easy mode. Still, it allows Mei to continue being useful late into the game, which is quite helpful. Overall, while Mei is slightly frail, she is an excellent unit and will be one of the hardest hitting magic users on your team. Just keep her well protected behind a bulky saber or Valbar and she will serve you quite well. Kamekos, Mei is perhaps one of the characters that have changed the least, and honestly, pretty much everything I said about her in Gaiden applies to her in Echoes as well. She's still a hard-hitting mage with durability issues, but easily one of the best units among your starting crew, and will remain consistently useful throughout the entire game. In Echoes, Mei has received a substantial bonus to her growth rates, now rocking a 40% speed growth as opposed to a 10% growth in Gaiden. While enemy stats have certainly gone up as well, particularly on hard mode, Mei no longer needs to get her speed stat boosted via the fountain at the start of the game in order to be able to double certain enemies, though it certainly helps to give her a few points here and there if you really plan on using her. Most of Mei's spells function exactly like in Gaiden too, with the exception of Aura, which has received a slight minus one reduction in might, but also had its weight reduced by two, meaning that it's a bit more feasible for Mei to pull off a few rare occasional Aura double attacks against some of the slower enemies in the game. Just be aware that it will cost her a total of 12 hit points to do so. As a priestess, Mei will receive access to swords and healing magic, like in Gaiden. This allows her to become a very useful supporting unit that can also fight incredibly well. Contrary to Gaiden, however, Mei gets access to Silence, a pretty useful utility spell that can shut down an enemy spellcaster for a turn. There aren't many cases in Echoes where you wouldn't just want to kill an enemy spellcaster rather than using one of your own units merely to shut him down for a turn, but against some of the more terrifying casters, this can provide some decent utility, though its range is very short at one-fourth of Mei's magic. Echoes also gives you some added versatility via the Villager's Forks, which allows Mei to take on a brand new role. She sadly does not gain access to any unique spells as a cleric, only learning Recover and Nosferatu, so it's not a terribly exciting alternative for her. Any of the physical classes, Cavalier, Mercenary or Pegasus Knight, will turn her into a physical glass cannon version of herself, hitting hard and frequently doubling, but in turn being as frail as tinfoil paper, as you'd expect. Honestly, turning Mei into any of these is more of a fun gimmick than anything else, as her true usefulness lies in early thunder magic access and the hard-hitting aura spell, but if anything, it might make your early game a bit more interesting. Whatever you decide to do with Mei, she will undoubtedly be one of the more useful units on your team, especially considering Bo is a bit of a dud in Echoes. Take good care of Little Miss Pigtails, and she is sure to nuke your enemies into orbit. <laughs> if you tease me, you've got it coming. Thank you for watching this Fire Emblem character spotlight. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and a comment, it really helps out the channel a lot. I would also like to thank my other Patreon supporters as well. Anyone of bronze tier or higher will automatically be listed at the end of my spotlights and certain other videos. I am very grateful for your continued support, thank you so much. The beautiful art and design you see created in this video was made by my designer, Mina Tangerina, and my script editors, Nasiro and Sonagi, helped me fine-tune the script for the spotlight. 
As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Finn Manx, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.